Hey everybody, BQ here with the Impact Lounge Twitch review from the Impact versus Lucha Underground show. Now I know that this review is coming almost a month late, and uh, my apologies for that, but uh, that's just the way life rolls sometimes, so maybe it's a little too... Uh, too past its moment for some of you guys, but I hope you still uh, enjoy the review. This is going to be the last time you hear me talking about a Twitch or One Night Only event. Uh, my boy Charles, who was uh, on the Redemption review, is going to start. Uh, he's a part of the team now, and he's going to start handling the Twitch and One Night Only. So, as you can see, I've been backing off quite a bit here on the channel. Ro is ha handling Explosion. Row and Adam are doing Impact, and then uh, Charles is going to be doing the GWN and Twitches. So I'm going to continue to do news, reviews, interviews, rumors, uh, best that I can. My my free time is now um, cut down quite a bit from what it's been uh, the past several months. So it's going to be tough to put up the content like you may, may be used to hearing here. But I will do my best, I promise. And then I'm going to continue to do the special podcast as well, like um, reviews, for the uh, pay-per-views or the previews of the pay-per-views and all that good stuff and then interviews as well. So before I get into the WrestleCon event, which was Impact and LU, I, w I did the WrestleCon event, um, you know, the convention itself, the day, I guess it was the day of. If you guys get the opportunity to ever go to WrestleCon, I really recommend it. Yes, it was a bit of a clusterfuck. But it was an experience I will never forget. And if you follow me on Instagram at BQ Speaks, my Instagram's still kind of new. I think it's only about a month old. But if you check me out there on Instagram, you'll see all the photos from everyone I took pictures with and met. So lots of Impact stars. Like, um, well, I, I took a sh uh, photo with the group after the show. But uh, Eli Drake and, you know, El Patron before he was fired. <laughs> Uh, who else, who else, who else? Um, lots of, lots of the divas, uh, from the WWE divas days, like Kelly Kelly and Candice Michelle, uh, some of the knockouts, Ali Sienna, Rosemary, Gail Kim, uh, Taryn Terrell, which is, which was a big one for me. Um, Christy Hemi. So I, I gotta say Taryn Terrell, Christy Hemi, and Mackenzie Mitchell are probably the three most beautiful women I've seen in person in my life. You know, some, some people look better in person. Some people look better on TV. Like, the three of them, amazing. Um, Christy Hemi is absolutely flawless in real life. Got to say that. Uh, Katrina from Lucha Underground. Uh, Taya. Rachel Ellering. I didn't take a photo with her. I already have one from an indie event, but I uh, bought a picture with her. Um, Tessa Blanchard. So, I got a photo with her. Uh, the Boogeyman. Man, uh, Jack Swagger, uh, Summer Ray, damn dude, I, I can't, I can't tell you. Amazing freaking day. Uh, I know there's a few here that I'm, I'm still missing. Uh, Brooke, uh, and I know I'm missing a few. But if you guys get the opportunity to ever do that, even if you don't go to a show, but if you do that actual convention, it will change your world. So let's talk real quick about Impact Lucha Underground show. So I'm gonna put this. Dis disclaimer out there for you guys and this is something that as impact fans not something we necessarily want to hear but i would i would venture to say that 60 percent of that audience was there for the lucha underground guys and and if it wasn't that much they were a lot louder and it makes me think maybe as impact wrestling fans maybe we're just not loud maybe that's just what it is because you know with lucha underground you got the lucha lucha and you know, Ring of Honor does what they do. Um, WWE uses a lot of catchphrases and they get the people involved in that way. And maybe that's just something that is just escaping impact as a whole. Because outside of Ali Chance and LAX Chance and, you know, Dummy, yeah, and everything. I mean, what what do we do as fans in the crowd? So I, I just feel like maybe it just comes with the territory. But much like the impact zone or whatever you see. It was not particularly loud in there on the impact side of things. But as a whole, the crowd was, was pretty hot. I mean, I know I might be contradicting myself a little bit, but um, as a whole, it was, it was it was an engaged crowd. But there was just so many moments where it just could have been louder, could have been more supportive for some of the impact stars. And it just, 
didn't happen. Did not happen. All right, so opening night, I mean, opening uh, opening of the show. So you may have heard on Twitch when, God, what the hell is her name? Um, Melissa, right? Uh, <laughs> sorry. From She said, are you guys ready for Lucha Underground? And you hear the, um, the cheers. And then you hear, are you ready for some Impact Wrestling? And you hear the boos. So let me explain this to you. The whole crowd was not like that. There was a group, a section of Lucha Smarks there to take over the show. Taking the Impact versus Lucha Underground title in the literal sense. And I'll put it like this. Those of us who were like mainly, you know, kind of Impact Wrestling fans, we were there for a good show. And then there was a group that was there to cheer Lucha Underground. So it made it sound very lopsided because there wasn't really there people cheering for Impact. Because the people cheering for Impact were cheering for both sides. They were just there for a good show. But there was a group trying to take over the show. And every time that uh, Melissa came out, they would cheer for her very loud to almost make Mackenzie feel secondary. And the problem was she was playing into it. They would, they would start cheering for her and she'd be like, what's up, guys? Hey, how's it going? I mean, she was playing up to that group, which was just encouraging them to be... Uh, more obnoxious and the moments where Mackenzie came out by herself they would start cheering we want Melissa and even when Mackenzie announced the I thought Mackenzie did a great job by the way even when she announced the Pentagon versus Phoenix match at Redemption that group started cheering you need Lucha you need Lucha so it was a very I'll put it like this your experience from home was probably better than my experience in person. It was uh, it was hard for me to enjoy the show. It was a great show, but at the same time for me being there in person, it was very difficult for me to enjoy it because I was actually kind of close to that group of fans and they, they were making it unenjoyable for me to be totally honest. If I had the choice next year, I would not go to that event again. Um, I kind of hope that they do a part two because it was a popular thing. But I, I will not be spending money for that next year. I'll, I will, I'll put it like that. As a, as a huge Impact fan, I'm, I won't put myself through that again. But let's talk about the matches itself because even though I might be <laughs> speaking from a, a negative voice here a little bit, just because of my own experience, this show was excellent. And that's why I said I think if you were watching from home, you probably enjoyed it quite a bit more. So when I do these reviews, they're very quick. They're very brief. I'm not breaking it down like I would in an episode of Impact. I'm just getting into the down and dirty of it. And hopefully if you haven't seen it on Twitch yet, I'm sure most of you have. I hope that you do watch it soon. So the opening match was Matanza, uh, Moose, Matt Seidel, Caleb Conley, Jack Evans, and Chavo Guerrero. And this was a six-way it initially was, uh, I, I could have swore it was announced as a six man tag, or at least people were under the impression it was a six man tag, but it was a six way. And Chavo was extremely over, extremely over. Matanza was also very much over. The Moose Chan was over. Um, Matt Seidel, not really so much. Uh, Jack Evans was because, you know, those smarks were cheering for anybody having to do with the company. Caleb Conley got some really loud boos, and I wasn't sure if it was because he was like the heel of the match or if they were booing him because he was impact. I don't really know exactly, but I thought the match was pretty decent. A uh, little, little clunky in some parts, but most of the wrestlers really got their stuff in, and there was some high flying, and there were some great moves, and it was a good opening bout. I mean, I think it it served its purpose. It was just a little random for my taste. When they announced it, I was kind of like, okay. I'm not really one for random multi-man matches that don't have stakes. You know, it's kind of like a, a video game. You know, hey, let's have a, let's have a six-man match for what? Uh, just to do it. But Matanza wins, and the crowd was very much excited about that. Knockouts title match, Ali versus Taya. So this is when I kind of knew 
the crowd, uh, I, I knew we were in trouble as Impact fans quite a bit because Allie was not over like she typically is. And there were the Allie chants, don't get me wrong. Um, not over like she typically is. And Taya was because of, again, that select group um, was getting a much better reaction. And part of it was the match itself because Taya is really, really hard hitting. So her offense and her moves, like you, you could hear them, the slaps and the knees and all that. Like it really looked like Allie was in a lot of pain. So the crowd was really reacting to that. Now, when it came to Allie, her offense is not near as hard hitting. So the way that it came off to the crowd, it just, it just really wasn't getting much of a reaction. But, you know, Allie's, Allie's always over, but I just expected more of a pop for her, for, for her in that crowd, and it really wasn't the case. This was actually one of the longer matches at over nine minutes, and Taya got a lot of her stuff in. And right now, Allie's the only person to pin Taya in Impact. Or, no, no, I'm sorry, uh, Rosemary pinned her as well, but Allie was the first one. And there were some people... When Mackenzie came out, this was the first time Mackenzie came out by herself that they were upset that it was the knockouts match. There were, there were some people like groaning when, you know, when she said the next bout is for the knockouts title. There's some people groaning, oh, you know, and, and that group, guess what? They started cheering. We want Lucha instead before the, um, the gals came out. So that's what I'm saying. I'm just trying to be honest with you guys with my experience and everything. Um, Scott Steiner and Teddy Hart taking on OBE. This was another really random match, but Scott Steiner was really, really over with the crowd there. It was funny because beforehand, uh, I only had 20 bucks cash on me because I didn't think I had to spend anymore. But uh, there were two lines, Austin Aries and Steiner. And um, for paid autographs and everything, paid photos, whatever, Aries had a line and Steiner to have a single person in his line. And... I kind of came to the conclusion that there was a bigger, a, a greater chance that I was going to run into Austin Aries at some point in my life than I would Steiner. So I, I took that last 20 I had and um, got my Steiner photo. Teddy Hart was pretty impressive with, with in this match. And um, overall, the crowd was actually pretty into this one, even though it was another match without Lucha. So again, that, that group was getting kind of restless. But overall, the crowd was pretty into this one. Uh, King Cuerno Drago and Aerostar taking on Andrew Everett, Desmond Xavier, and DJZ. I expected the crowd to be a lot more into this one. The crowd was was very uh, lopsided for the for the Lucha group. Um, and again, I, it's not that they weren't cheering for the others. It's just that that particular group was just trying to hijack the show. They were very, very loud. And everyone was getting their stuff in in this match. And when every time the lucha guys were hitting high impact moves you know you could hear oh, oh and then the impact guys would hear high, hit high impact moves and it was almost like that uh portion of the audience was just not reacting on purpose so i was really surprised um expected uh, just expected a little bit more from the overall crowd involvement in this match and djz was doing the dj z he was trying that out wasn't wasn't really getting over Seemed like it did a little bit better at Redemption. But um, who won this match? King Cuerno, Drago, and Aerostar. Aero Pretty much the Lucha Underground guys won every match unless it was a title match. Trevor Lee took on, a Mar with the exception of this math match against Marty the Moth. It was a quick match. Wasn't my favorite match on the card. Uh, Famous B was supposed to come out. He, um, I was very shocked when he was on the card to begin with. I was kind of random. He comes out and uh, announces Marty the Moth. Marty the Moth is as heel as they get, annoying as they get. And again, the crowd was just all about some Marty. But thankfully, Trevor Lee won the match. Tag team title match, LAX against Killshot in the MAC. LAX won this match. This was the match where the crowd did start kind of turning into a more positive direction where they were actually uh, into this for both sides. And there was the point at the very end where Ortiz... Almost dropped. I think it might have been kill shot, and they started cheering. You fucked up, Adam. As Impact fans, we don't do that. We just we're the one uh, one group of fans. We respect our our promotion, our wrestlers that that we're there to see. And you'll never hear at an Impact show people do that. 
So that was kind of disappointing. But this was a match where even that group of fans kind of got the this is awesome chant going. Like that this was one and again LAX first came out was not as over as I thought they were going to be. Uh Diamante was out with them which was really really awesome. But this match delivered. This this was an ass kicker. They just both sides was just doing such amazing things. Um early on I was hoping LAX was going to get some more high powered offense in. It seemed like a kill shot in the Mac were were sta- or standouts at the beginning. And uh I think everybody knew LAX was going to win, so that's that little bit of drama was the only thing missing from the match that otherwise really delivered and had the crowd fully engaged uh, for almost the entire thing. The I Quit match, Jeremiah, oh, actually before that, I'm sorry, it was Brian Cage versus Eli Drake. If you couldn't understand what Eli Drake said to the crowd when he came out, he he kind of went into his into business for himself in a good way. He came out and he addressed that group of fans. He said, this group of 40-year-old virgins over here, and, uh, you know, and then he went to a long spiel and then he said, hey, you guys are sitting here. Oh, Lucha Underground so cool. Impact sucks. Well, at least Impact doesn't have to take two years off between seasons. So I don't know if that that's what came out or not. I think I heard a lot of people couldn't understand what he said, but that is what he said. At least Impact doesn't have to take two years off between seasons. And uh, Melissa Santos, she was kind of standing close, to, or she was in the ring as the one of the ring announcers. And I looked at her face, and she was like, "Damn," <laughs> almost like she was she was a bit embarrassed. Uh, that being said, this match right here, Eli Drake cuts the promo beforehand, tells Brian Cage what he was saying. He's like, "Hey, man, you and I go back. Let's let's get out of here. Hit the town. Get some drinks." They shook hands, and then Eli went for the cheap shot. So this match was cool. Uh, crowd was into it again. Of course, Cage having the Lucha Underground ties got a, had a little bit more behind them, but this was cool for what it was. I know it was just a house show, but I feel like they were booked into the into a corner a little bit because you know Cage couldn't lose, and then you didn't want Eli Drake to lose. But he, uh, Brian Cage ends up getting the victory, and Eli Drake is kind of an MVP for the night at this point for uh, doing what he did. The I Quit match, this was a 20-minute match that, again, the crowd was really involved with. With um, Sammy Callahan being Jeremiah Crane, of course, he had a little bit more behind him. But for the most part, the crowd was very excited about this, very into it. I was reading a review on 411 Mania saying he didn't like the match, which I can't understand. The people were uh, into it from the very beginning. Uh, Eddie dove outside the ring at the very beginning, and... Uh, it was on from there, and the match was great. I had no complaints about it, other than Eddie wasting a lot of time at the end. I don't remember if it was a kendo stick or what the hell, or a chair, and he was kind of like playing up to the crowd for what felt like an eternity before he uh, used the weapon. The finish to the match was Don Callis throwing in the towel. I would have liked to have seen Alicia do it instead. I thought it was kind of a cheap way to finish, but I get why they did it, because you didn't want to definitive winner well I mean there was a definitive winner Jeremiah Crane wins but at the same time Eddie didn't quit so I get why they did it I just would have rather seen Alicia do it because she was there she was she was there at the event speaking of there at the event Gail Kim entered with uh Winter and Rosa Mendez and Rosa Mendez actually just started taking bookings and uh Summer Rae did as well she just started taking bookings and i kind of wish when i met her i would have asked her you know if she had any interest in uh, being a knockout or whatever many of you don't want her to be but i i mean i i particularly like her like her so i i'm curious to be honest but i just found that weird that a winner was there and then all of a sudden she's part of the company again and then uh rosa was with her and now she's taking bookings again so i don't know keep an eye on that one but the i quit match was pretty good Pentagon Jr. taking on Austin Aries and Phoenix. You guys probably heard the fuck Del Rio chants. At first when they said it was a three-way, I thought maybe Phoenix was hurt or something. I wasn't expecting Alberto not to show up. And everyone started cheering fuck El- uh, Del Rio because, you know, us there in the crowd, we had no idea like why he wasn't there. But because of his history, people just knew. It was like an unspoken thing where everyone just knew he didn't show up. So we ended up probably getting a better main event for it. And the spot where they did the double super kick at the very end, they really kicked his head off. Like, I've, I've never seen that shot, hardest shot in person in my life. Insane. He de- They definitely knocked him out 
with that one. So I don't even know that Pentagon was supposed to win the match, but much to the crowd's delight, he did win. And, you know, initially when El Patron was part of it, I had said, you know, I, I fully believe that that match was put together so that an Impact star and Lucha Underground star could leave with their hands raised at the end of the night. That's fully what I believe they were trying to do. But Pentagon wins, so the crowd for the most part goes very goes home very happy with it. The match, uh, again, it was better than the one we were probably going to get. You guys saw what they did at Redemption, and it was it was balls of the wall. It was great. The crowd is very much behind Aries as well. So the very beginning of the of the night, like the first half, it was just it just felt like super lucha heavy with the crowd, and then as it progressed. It seemed like everyone was just there having a good time, but my my big things uh, that I had a that I was upset with was uh, the disrespect I felt Mackenzie was getting when she came out, and I don't think she was expecting that those boos in the beginning, and I think she was probably pretty nervous. So uh, I don't know why I feel so protective of her. I guess because I spoke to her a couple hours before that, and she was very kind to me and talked to me for a while. And even said, hey, if you come to Redemption, you know, tweet at me. I'll come say hi to you. So I guess I, I became pretty protective of her after that. So it was uh, really bothering me. But um, other than that, it, the, the show was good. I know I'm, I'm speaking on a lot of negatives. The show was good. It was entertaining. Just there in person, I, I will not do that again. I wish I would have spent my money, honestly, on Redemption instead. But then I wouldn't have done the WrestleCon thing before that, and that was such a big deal to me that, you know, something I'll never forget. So I know this was kind of a brief rundown, not the most positive rundown I've given you guys, but it's going to be my last one. And uh, you guys will be hearing Charles on the channel here covering things, and uh, there's a lot that I'm kind of stepping down from or uh, scaling back on because personal life just doesn't allow it. But Charles, Rowe, and Adam are going to continue to do really good jobs in my place uh, when, when I'm not involved. And if it weren't for those guys, I don't know how much this channel would be and the podcast would be doing going forward. Because my personal schedule is not allowing for as much involvement right now as I usually would like. So if it's your first time here, guys, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, leave your thoughts in the comments because I know watching at home your experience was probably better than mine. So let me know what you guys liked, didn't like about the show. And um, that's all I've got. Talk to you later. Peace.